I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Patrick Quino. I'm bringing you Fit Moment Live. This is Fit Moment Live, a time to um, check your fit level in God. In God. Amen. We thank God for this blessed day. We've been dealing and discussing the subject of um, the ministry of the Holy Spirit as we came from a journey of understanding the fact that we are not living in the old dispensation of the law, but in this new dispensation of grace. But we need to understand grace. We need to understand grace and uh, where we have come from hallelujah we need to understand grace um, and by understanding grace we must know where we're coming from if not we would not just um, have the full impact of this promise that Jesus gave uh, through to us by sending the Holy Spirit for which we are enjoying this dispensation all right, let's have a word of prayer. Um, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, this afternoon, this day, for wherever you are, you are watching under the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God has been good. Father, we, great, we are grateful, and we ask, O oh God, that you will bless even the more as we study your word. None of me, but all of you. Holy Spirit, take over and be a blessing to your people, even as we come to the place of understanding the very essential and the purpose for which you are with us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you are just joining wherever you are, um, again, I want you to know that we are living in a dispensation um, of grace, of grace, God's grace, the grace that um, by virtue of not being able to fulfill the commandment that God gave or being able to um, handle our part of, um, of the agreement, God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to come and do that for us so that we can be, um, we can be um, re- invited to the table, to the table um, uh, to enjoy all that God has given to you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see, we see, um, even as we study in the past, that uh, Jesus came in Matthew 5, 17. He says he came to fulfill it. He came to fulfill what we could not fulfill. He came to fulfill what we, we could not fulfill just so that he can bring us into back to the banqueting table of our God. Amen. The relationship between God and man. Now, um, he came, Jesus came to do all that, all that. And the bottom line is he took upon himself your sins, my sins, your curse and my curse. And nail it all on the cross. Nail it to the cross. Nail it to the cross and completed the assignment for which he came. And that is to redeem mankind back to God by sacrificing his blood. Now remember that um, in the old days or in that old Lord covenant of dispensation, um, it was the high priest then who took blood into um, the sanctuary once a year to make sacrifices for the redemption of our sins or for the pacifications of our sins. All right. First of all, number one, number one, and I, I want to always remind, uh, especially the, um, the current believers, all right, the now believers, that that old covenant was with God and the Jewish people, the ones that he God called them and set them apart, 
we the Gentiles were not part of the deal. Are you listening? We came into the deal after, after Jesus had come and, um, and um, 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 you know, took upon himself, did for us what, you know, tra transcended into our life what we could not have done and brought us into it by whoever believe, by whosoever believe. So this word, many time you see, whosoever believe. Beloved, it's not automatic. He died for everybody. Yes. Everybody, what a green, black, white, name it. He died for everybody. He died for the entire world. Jesus came for everybody. And now, whether you want to, I mean, look at it, whichever religion it may be, yes. But whosoever believe in that which he did, for him or her individually, became, became. So it's, it was not a, just an automatic thing that you just come, you know, I mean, because he died for everybody, so therefore everybody is going to heaven. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -mm. You got to receive what he did. You got to receive what he has done for you and I. Now, so we've gone that, we've gone past that, come into all that Jesus did, nailed it finally to the cross, said it is finished, was crucified, was buried, and resurrected by God on the third day. All right? Now, um, then Jesus had to depart this earth. Then Jesus had to depart this earth. All right? Stephen, God bless you for coming on the line. And Sam, God bless you. Okay? God bless you, Sam. And so Jesus had to depart. Now, by so doing, though he gave a promise that he has finished his work and that he has to depart back to the Father for which we read and, and know that he seated at the, uh, at the right hand of God, making intercession for you and I, still even making intercession for you and I. Okay, now you and I have to come to the place of believing and receiving what he did. Believing and receiving what he did. Beloved, if you don't do that, you cannot be part of the family. That is the bottom line. If you don't do that. And so you have to believe the finished work of Jesus and then accept, <clears throat> believe him and accept what he has done for you. Okay. Now, Jesus then gave us a promise that as he was departing, he will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to come and be with us and in us forever. He will be with us forever. Now, we see that. We see that the, the Holy Spirit then came, okay, in the day of Pentecost as, um, as an evidence of uh, his presence in our life. The Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit has come. And then we see that since the Holy Spirit um, uh, had, um, uh, came, there is unusual things that men can now do as a result of um, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Okay. Um, Mary John, God bless you from India. I hope you're doing well over there. So now we are talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Why it's so important and very essential uh, part of, of our lives. Because without the Holy Spirit, like I said, you cannot function to your capacity. All that good potentials God has placed in you may not be able you may not be able to to bring it all out to the to the max without the help of the holy spirit so the holy spirit the the, the purpose of the holy spirit is to help us to live a life of completeness to live a life of fullness to live the complete life the complete potential god god has put in you and me the purpose of the holy spirit is not you know, to, to be falling under power and to be shaking and, and that kind of stuff. No, the Holy Spirit helps you as a believer. Listen, now, let me let me say this thing to you yesterday. 
um, Joyce and I were discussing some things and and uh, she made some points that I want to just bring this before before I just forget myself in where, where what I want to say now the Holy Spirit beloved helps you in every area of your life if you have accepted the Lord Jesus and be baptized the Holy Spirit helps you in every area of your life now you fill in the blanks wherever you are whatever you are doing as long as you are born again receive the Holy Spirit in your life the Holy Spirit now takes over in your own life in every area of your life and begin to you know to uh, to prune you into coming to a place of fullness Shannon God bless you long time all right and so the Holy Spirit does come and he has come and he is with you are you listening to me if the condition is if you have received jesus christ as your lord and savior and baptizing him now the holy spirit takes over now the holy spirit helps you in every area of your life remember jesus said that he will he will send the comforter the helper so the holy spirit is our helper the Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is our strength. The Holy Spirit is our light. The Holy Spirit, listen, whatever you want the Holy Spirit to do, the Holy Spirit is. Like God said to Moses, tell Pharaoh that whatever he think I am, I am. The Holy Spirit is. Trust me, the Holy Spirit is everything that you need him to be. Are you listening to me, to, to me? First of all, he comes into your life. He came with a, with an agenda that his agenda is to help you and I. Barbara, God bless you. The agenda of the Holy Spirit is to help you and me in every area of our lives. There are things, listen, you cannot do certain things in your own ability. Now, the Holy Spirit First of all, when he has come into your life, begins to tear off, okay, the certain areas of your life that does not correspond to the plan of God in you. And so we must, we must understand this. Emmanuel, God bless you, Ni. God bless you. Okay, we must understand that the Holy Spirit has come and when he has come into your life, the first thing, like I said, he begins to prune you. He begins to wear off. Okay, you and I are like um, like onions. Okay, onions in the hand of the Holy Spirit, and you know we have layers. Onions have la different layers. When you take one layer off, you see there's another layer. So, so the Holy Spirit begins to take all those things off because those are those sinful natures. Okay, in our lives that he begins to tear off. He begins to wear off. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He begins to wear off all those things of your life. Are you listening? Um, prosperity, God bless you. I love your name, Prosperity. I live that name, okay? Now, the Holy Spirit begins to wear off all those things because as, as a sinful nature of us, we must be pruned, okay, to bring the real God's given potential in us. And so you will come to a place that eventually you see that certain things that you used to do, you're not doing them anymore. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is now taking its rightful place in your life. And so we've been talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, beloved, is not for you to be falling under power in church. The Holy Spirit walks and lives in you everywhere you are. If you have accepted Jesus Christ and be baptized, the Holy Spirit walks with you anywhere. At your job, in your school, in your family, wherever. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is with you. And you can call upon the Holy Spirit at any time. Talk to Him at any time. You don't have to wait till, till you go to church before you encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit. No. 
<clears throat> are you listening to me so the holy spirit is a uh, is is somebody that you don't put him you know on 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 one side and pick him as and when you want no 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 is either with you or with without you he's either with you or he's not with you and we see in the scripture where the holy spirit as a result of the holy spirit coming upon their lives somebody like peter you begin to now do things that you couldn't do before now it's not that you couldn't do them before because these potentials are there they are in you but you cannot function them out in your own ability and so the holy spirit was sent as promise to you and i to help us function in those capacities are you listening and so you must acknowledge the holy spirit you must welcome the holy spirit and you must live with the holy spirit and know that the holy spirit is is is, is in you and then don't don't beloved don't 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 try to to struggle with it just live your life acknowledging that the holy spirit is in you and with you to help you in all things just acknowledge that and live your life without struggle without trying to to um um to 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 justify your righteousness before god no that's the work of the Holy Spirit. A lot of us are doing, trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit, and especially those of, of you who try to become personal Holy Spirit, a personal, you know, to uh, Holy Ghost to people. Stop. You cannot be anybody's personal Holy Spirit. Are you listening? You cannot be anybody's personal Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. He can do it better than anybody else. I mean, what makes you think that you can be anybody's personal Holy Spirit if you yourself, okay, if you yourself can't even help your own self? If you can't help your own self, what makes you think that you can help the Holy Spirit do His work? <laughs> eh? If you can't help yourself, what makes you think that you can help the Holy Spirit to do His work? So allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. Are you listening to me? All right? It is not by might. You heard that before in Zach Zachariah 4 6 it is not by might it is not by your power it is not by your might or by your power or by your your connections or by who you know and the family you were born to and and all it's none of that it's not at all that it is by the spirit are you listening it is by the spirit it's not by your might it's not by your power it's by the spirit of God hallelujah so allow the Holy Spirit now that you are born again, now that you've given your life to the, uh, to the Lord Jesus and baptized, allow the Holy Spirit now to do His work. Now, you were not living in the time Jesus was walking on the face of the earth. I will have asked you, did you try to do the work of, of, of Jesus for Him? Now, you realize that even the disciples who were with Him could not do the work of, of Jesus Himself. Many a times, sick people were brought to, uh, to the disciples you know, whether they had, they were full of demons or evil spirit or what kind of sickness. And the Bible said they couldn't do nothing. They couldn't do it. Then they brought them to Jesus. All right. Then they brought them to Jesus. A hey, woman of God, God bless you. From Fountain Gate. <laughs> God bless you. All right. They couldn't do it. In the time of Jesus, the people, his own disciples could not do the work of Jesus. And so anytime they brought the sick people and all that, he couldn't do, they couldn't do it. Then they gave it to, they brought them to Jesus and Jesus did his work. So is this dispensation that the Holy Spirit is, is at work. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. You cannot do the work of the Holy Spirit, beloved. You can't do the work of the Holy Spirit. You can't. You cannot. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do. You cannot do it. So allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. Pastors, preachers, prophets, evangelists, teachers, apostles, allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. All right? And, and please stop condemning, oh boy, stop condemning anybody because the Holy Spirit has 
his own assignment of peeling the layers off from our lives is the work of the Holy Spirit. You yourself, you can't, you are not even complete. What makes you think? That's why Jesus says, you want to just, you know, take what is in somebody's eyes. First, take what's in your own eyes. Take, take that thing out of your own eyes first. Then you can see. So please allow the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. He knows what to do better than you. And we see evidences of the fact that he enables you to do the unusual things. Things that God has deposited in you that is there. It's, it hasn't come out. It's the Holy Spirit who can help you to do it. To bring those things out. The, the potential. Remember, scripture tells you and I that the Bible says that the, God says the plans he has for you, they are good and not evil. To bring you to the expected end. That's why you don't need to call anybody out. Don't think anybody. Listen, don't even think because you don't know what God has deposited in that individual. And it's a matter of time. So just allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. All right. And um, if somebody's um, criticizing you and, um, you know, chastising you, whatever, just tell them, listen, just give me time. Because the Holy Spirit is still at work. And beloved, the Holy Spirit hasn't left yet. The Holy Spirit has not left. He's still with us. Jesus says he will be with us and in us forever. Underline that word forever. So the Holy Spirit is still with us here. So allow the Holy Spirit to work. Whatever you don't understand, ask the Holy Spirit. Whatever you don't know, ask the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Because he is with you. If you have received, let me, I want to keep repeating myself. If you have received the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work and be baptized, the Holy Spirit is now at work and allow him to do his work. Okay? Now we see more scripture. Listen, if the Holy Spirit was not of importance, huh, somebody wouldn't want to even offer money to buy the Holy Spirit. Somebody didn't want, I mean, some, remember in the book of uh, Acts, the 19th chapter, I believe, we, we, we've been looking at that, that scripture. This guy called Simon, he was a sorcerer. When he saw the, the Holy Spirit at work, he saw the manifestation of the power that was, 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 was you know, was uh, demonstrated after the Holy Spirit has come upon Peter. He said, he said, if he, he wanted to offer money to buy the Holy Spirit. Now, what makes you think you can buy the Holy Spirit? If the Holy Spirit was not attractive. And so allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. Are you listening? Don't try to do anything. Listen, it is not by might or by power. It is by the Holy Spirit. We are living in the, this dispensation of grace. It would take the Holy Spirit for you to enjoy the grace. It wouldn't, it, I'm telling you, it would take, it takes the Holy Spirit. Now, now the grace without the Holy Spirit, how are you going to enjoy the grace? Huh? How are you going to enjoy the grace without the Holy Spirit? You can't even enjoy anything, anything around you without the Holy Spirit. Because this is his, this is his time. This is his dispensation. This is the time of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. All right. And, 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 and scripture tells you and I that, Prophecy was even given by the prophet Joel that in the last days, remember in these days when you see certain things unusual, you say, oh boy, we're in the last days. Well, if you believe this is the last days, then believe the gospel as well. That in the last days, God says he'll pour his spirit upon all flesh, his Holy Spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. And so if you believe that this is the last days, then believe it also that the Holy Spirit is at work. Are you listening to me? And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are going to, listen, we see the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit in so many areas of your life. But I just want to make it very practical to you that Holy Spirit is not a theory. Are you listening to me? It's not. The Holy Spirit is not a theory. It's not something that is there. That It's not a case study. The Holy Spirit is a personality. It's real. Practically real in your life. Listen to, listen. this is his name, the Holy Spirit. Do you see spirit? Do you see the air? 
You don't see the air, you feel it, but you know it's real. And so is he. And so is he, the Holy Spirit. If you are true, if you if he lives in you and with you, you will be seeing certain things that it's it's just unusual. The Bible said that Peter, after the Holy Spirit has come upon him, the guy who was afraid and, and telling everybody that Jesus was not his friend, he didn't know him, he was afraid to be dead. Now he wasn't even afraid to die anymore. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, beloved, you can listen. Both see the Holy Spirit gives you boldness and courage. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness and courage. The Holy Spirit doesn't bring you no fear. The Holy Spirit don't bring you no fear. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit brings you courage. The Holy Spirit brings you to the place of, of, uh, of boldness. Hallelujah. And now Peter, the Bible said that he was now able to stand up and speak about Jesus. The same Jesus he betrayed. The same Jesus that he was afraid to die when he, if he had said that, yes, he knew Jesus. Now he stood up and said, yes, I know who he is. He is the son of God. He is the one who came to die to redeem mankind out of his sinful nature and um, reconnect man back to God. Bible says that instantly about 5,000 people would give their life to, you know, just, just believe. Just believe. Hallelujah. Just believe. Now, that is, that, is, that is after the Holy Spirit has come. Before then, he wasn't. So you see that when the Holy Spirit comes and takes over, you are able to do. Now, that happens in any area of your life. Whether you are in business, whether you are in school, your family life, ministry life, whatever it may be. Let the Holy Spirit, beloved, I'm telling you, stop trying to, you know, this thing about, you know, I'm struggling in ministry and uh, it's, it's ministry. Say, I, I didn't have no, I didn't used to have no sense in my head about, because I thought I, I have to do it on my own effort and my own, my own strength. Now, what makes you think that, you know, it's not your job. You are called into it. Hallelujah. You are called into it. Now, check check the scriptures. Who did you see trying to force any anything, uh, anybody to uh, just believe in uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ or or, or his, his finished work? Did you see anybody that? No. The challenges that the disciples or the apostles went through is as a result of them preaching the gospel. So they, if you say, oh, Paul suffered. But, well, he suffered for the gospel. Not to say that, you know, he has to just, you know, try to, you know, do this and, and, and all that. No, he saw because people did not want to hear what he used to do was done to him because people didn't want to hear. Remember that not everybody believed the gospel. Not everybody received it. Are you listening? Especially the religious people. And that is why you have to, you have to make sure that you are not receiving religious messages. Christianity is a practical life. Beloved, it's a practical life. And now that the Holy Spirit is with us, you are able to do things that you couldn't do before. I'm telling you, allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in you. If you are in business, just invite the Holy Spirit to be part of the business. In your marriage, allow the Holy Spirit to be part of it. In your education, allow the Holy Spirit to be part of it. In ministry, allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Whatever area of your life, allow the Holy Spirit. I am telling you, it may sound like it's a difficult thing, but let me tell you something. When things are quiet and you don't see nothing, just know that the Holy Spirit is at work. Glory be to God. I'm telling you. Yes, it may sound scary because all your life you've been trying to do things on your own ability. And so it'd be difficult for you in the beginning for you to, you know, see some quietness around you and things are not moving and all that. No. And beloved, see, when you come to this place, when things are not going at the pace, like I was sharing last weekend, um, uh, hey, Lucy, God bless you, Lucy. Whoa, my goodness. All right. When you don't see things going the way, the pace in which it's going, please, don't think that there's any demon, you know, from your family background is, 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 is pulling you behind and all that kind of stuff. See, whatever you believe, you will serve. 
Did you hear what I said? Whatever you believe, you will serve. You will be a servant to whatever you believe Jesus is. Whatever you believe in will become your, your master. Whatever you believe in, if you believe in darkness and the fact that some demon in your family background, some old lady with no teeth is the one causing you not to, you know, just get things in, that you become. Whatever you be, I'm telling you, fear is a liar. And that is what our ignorance, our ignorance give the devil, that devil that you spend more time in, in praying against, instead of praising God more, he takes what you don't know. He don't have anything to offer. He takes what you have, which is your ignorance, and use it against you. Beloved, I keep saying this and time and again, anything that you don't understand cannot bless you. If you don't understand the fact that the Holy Spirit is with you, how is he going to, I mean, how are you going to see the manifestation of his work in your life and, and in your business or whatever area of your life? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? So the Holy Spirit is at work in this dispensation of the grace of God that we are enjoying. Allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Is the Holy Spirit, this is the work, this is the time of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Say amen. Come on, give, let me say, let me see you saying amen with your, your likeness and your thumbs up and all those good stuff. Say amen. Amen means you agree. Glory be to God. Because it is. Beloved, it is. You don't have to be smacked up in your head with any other gospel. Listen, that's what scripture said. Don't believe any other gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of God. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit. Now, the, 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 difference, the difference here is the fact that, watch this, the difference is, now, when you believe and you receive, hallelujah. Let's go into some scriptures. I've been talking so much enough right now. Let's go into some scripture. Let me show you some. All right. Now, chapter 11 of, uh, of Acts. Acts chapter 11. Glory be to God. Acts chapter 11. Now, the apostles and the brethren who were now, who were in Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. The Gentiles. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The Gentiles. Not, not the, the people of Israel, the Gentiles also. Who were the Gentiles? The, the Gentiles were people who, you and I were the Gentiles. Okay, verse 2. And Peter came up to Jerusalem. Those of the circum, circum, circumcision contended with him. Okay, this is, Peter is now is going to be defending his ministry. Saying, verse 3. You went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance. I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners. And it came to me, and I observed it intently and considered I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the earth. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not. I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But a voice answered me again from heaven, and said, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now, this was done three times, and all were drawn up against, again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, I was, I was having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit, underline the word Spirit, then the Spirit told me, the Holy Spirit told me to go with them doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered the house, the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose name, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all 
your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit, oh, watch this now. As I began to speak, this is Peter now. This is Peter. Hey, Lydia, God bless you. As I began to speak, as I began to speak, as I began to speak, man, I love this. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Peter was making reference to the beginning when the Holy Spirit came upon them in, in Jerusalem in the day of Pentecost. That's what he was making reference to. That the, the, the same way the Holy Spirit came upon these people was Peter began to speak, speak word, speak the gospel, preach the gospel to them of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, you know, Jesus is no longer here, remember. So the Holy Spirit is now at work. Are you listening to me? Jesus is now is no longer with Peter, Paul, and the disciples. Jesus has finished his work and gone back to the Father and, and, and seated at the right hand of God. So now the Holy Spirit is at work. And Peter's making reference to, to them. Look at verse, verse 15 again of Acts 11. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remember the word of the Lord Jesus, how he said, John baptized, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to, you, to be baptized, he dwells in you. See, he lives in you. Jesus says, go with me. Let me show you something here. What I'm saying, go with me to Matthew chapter um, chapter 5. Look at Matthew chapter 5. We'll come back to this scripture. Don't, don't lose that. Now, God bless you, dear. Oh, it's good to know that you are alive and well. God bless you. Matthew chapter 5. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I want to show you something real quick. Matthew chapter 5. Glory be to God. Look at verse, verse um, Matthew chapter 5. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Are you there with me? Watch this now. Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> Jesus is saying something here very important. All right? He says, do not think I came to fulfill... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, yes. Watch chapter 5 verse... Look at verse 16. Um, verse, six, verse 16 and 17. I'm reading from 16 down to... So, so that you can follow into... Look... look let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophet. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Are you listening? For surely I say to you, till, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Till all is fulfilled. Till all is fulfilled. This is part of the fulfillment of the prophet, of the prophecy. That the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will lead you into doing great and mighty things. Are you listening to me? So watch this now. Watch this now. Where were we? In the book of Acts. Look at Acts 11 again. Okay. Then he says, verse 16, Then I remember the word of the Lord. I remember the word of the Lord. He, Paul, he, Peter, saying, then he remembered what Jesus has said, that John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believe on the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could withstand God? If, if this people... The Gentiles, we now are coming. See, now we are coming into the into the into the into the game. If we have believed as they as they the Israelites did, the Jews, the, some of their disciples there, then who we see, like he's saying, to withstand God, verse 18. When they heard these things, they became silent. They became silent. And they glorified God, saying, then 
Good. Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance of life. It's no longer just the Jews. We are part of the deal. We're part of the covenant now. Watch this. Verse 19. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. You see, now the word is spreading because the Jews must, must first get, they were the first people to get this. But listen, hey, God is not a respect of persons. Are you listening to me? God is not a respect of persons. That is why don't think that it is, it's, an, it's an inner thing and, uh, and, and, and somebody who comes dressed in your church the way you are not dressed, that person is not holy. You are, you are lying to yourself. You don't even know what the Holy Spirit may be doing. You know, there's, there's this story, and, uh, and I believe it's a true story uh, because somebody shared, sent a video uh, to me about uh, a pastor of a church who dressed uh, himself um, like a homeless person and sat uh, close to the entrance of the church that he pastors. Just, just as it happens in the, in, the, in the days of Peter and John. And people were going into the church, into the church, on, I believe it was a Sunday. And everybody was just passing by this homeless guy sitting by there. It was some, I guess he was, I don't know whether he was even asking them for money or whatever. But they passed by him and entered the church. Passed by him and entered the church. Nobody even said nothing to him. Pastor had dressed himself like a hobo. We say in, in Americans, we say hobo. You, somebody who didn't look like you. He didn't look like you. And for that reason, you know, you thought that He's not in because you are holy at all. Well, that was your pastor. And he sat there and people were passing by him and because he looks stinky and all that. And well, everybody got into the church looking at the time. It was time for the pastor to show up on the pulpit. And guess who just walked into, into the, uh, the sanctuary where now everybody is waiting. The same guy that they pass the same stinky looking guy that they pass when they were coming into the church and I, some wanted to even stop him but there was something about him that when he opened his mouth and he walked straight to the pulpit and when he opened his mouth everybody was surprised yes that is a religious mindset of people. Because somebody don't look like you, you think that person don't have the Holy Spirit. You, you are lying. And that is why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. Beloved, don't think that anybody, a helmet, God bless you. Don't think that somebody who doesn't look like you it's not of God. Don't think that. Don't think that somebody who does not look like you is not of God. God says that in the last days he, he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. So you never know. You never know. The whole, I, 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 I dare to say that the Holy, the Holy Spirit is not working any longer just only from the pulpit. No, but it's all over the place. On all over people, everybody, or people who have received. So you see now the Gentiles have also been granted the same spirit. Verse 20, but some of them were from Cyprus. Some of the men were from Cyprus and Cyrene who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these 
things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great, a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were the first to be called Christians in Antioch. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Are you listening? The disciples were the first to be called Christians. Now remember, a lot of people, a lot of people who believe, join them it was not only only the jews a lot of people now you see that the gentiles has also come to be part of the table to be part of the covenant of this covenant of this new covenant of this new dispensation are you listening when the Holy Spirit comes, remember Peter when he came and he was he started, he began to speak to them. The Holy Spirit fell upon them as in the days when they experienced and encountered the Holy Spirit. Beloved, we are living in the days now and in the times of this dispensation that you can only understand and enjoy this grace. If you have the Holy Spirit with you, you cannot listen. You cannot, you cannot tell me that you are enjoying and first of all even understand this grace dispensation without the Holy Spirit. You you can't. You you then you don't know what you're talking about. The Holy Spirit is with us now. The Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. Without the Holy Spirit, Bishop Jones, God bless you. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you 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 will be receiving the short end of the stake as a Christian. I said to you time and again yesterday, even I repeated myself, it's not enough to say that you have received Jesus as your Lord. It's not enough. You must have the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself said that I will send the Holy Spirit another helper he says I will send you another helper so you need the Holy Spirit you have believed in Jesus yes praise the Lord for that yesterday I gave you an illustration of a Christian without the Holy Spirit okay and that is like holding a coca-cola bottle you know that coca-cola drink Everybody knows Coca-Cola in the face of this world. I mean, I, I did some study and I was surprised that some remote villages in some part of this earth, they even know Coca-Cola. So you're holding a Coca-Cola bar bottle with the, with the inscription and the name of Coca-Cola in it. But who wants the bottle without the, the actual product in it? So you are Christian, yes, labeled a Christian. You, you, go, you go to church, so, I mean... These days, going to church makes people think that they are Christians. That's number one. That's, that's all well and good. Fine. We need you in church. But the next step for you to come into fullness of that is for you to have the Holy Spirit in you. Because, beloved, without the Holy Spirit, you are just a Coca-Cola bottle with nothing in it. The Holy Spirit, when he, you know, in you, the Bible said that, that, Peter was full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. You must be full. 
You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, yes, you are Christian, fine. You may you will go to heaven because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, but on this earth, you will not live a life to the fullness of your potential. You, must, you will not. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit who is now at work in this dispensation. It's no longer Jesus on the face of this earth, but the Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself, that's what Jesus gave us. He says, I am leaving, but I'll send you another helper. So stop doing the work of the Holy Spirit. Trying to do things in your own strength and your own ability. Beloved, you can. That's why you keep failing. Allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Allow the Holy Spirit to do. Don't try to be anybody's, for that matter, anybody's personal Holy Spirit. Most of the time we try to be people, people's personal Holy Spirit. You can do it. What makes you think that you can do the work of the Holy Spirit? You can't. All you have to do, as we saw the disciples do, was that they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, those, those that believe and receive it were baptized. Then the Holy Spirit took over. Are you, are you seeing the process here? Preach the gospel, those who receive it. You cannot you know, knock anybody on the head to receive the gospel. When their time has not come, you can say heaven and earth, they will not believe. But when they come to believe it and receive it, then you lead them into baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will take over their lives. Because things need to be wear off from our lives. Things need to be wear off. You, you, you went through the same thing and still even going through the same thing. Things have to be wear off from your life. The all things. If any man be in Christ, he is born again. The old things pass, are passed away. Behold, everything is becoming new. But it, it's a process. Are you listening? That is why you are born again. You've given your life to the Lord. But every now and then you feel like doing some of the old things you used to do. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit is still working in you. So don't, don't, beat, up, don't beat up yourself. That, you know, you fell, you, you, you maybe curse somebody and, 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 and it's like, oh, I've sinned. And, and, and are you beating yourself up and all that? That's a religious way of living. Are you listening? That's a religious way of living. That is not what God expects of you now that you have received the finished work of Jesus Christ, be baptized and the Holy Spirit takes over. You can't do the work. If those then couldn't do the work of Jesus when Jesus was with them, what makes you think that you can do the work of the Holy Spirit who is with us now? You can't do the work of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit is working in you. And beloved, don't think that, listen, don't only look for the Holy Spirit on Sundays when you go to church. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is with you at all times. Engage Him in the areas that you, you, your strength can handle things. Allow the Holy Spirit. Jesus says when He comes, He will lead you into all, all things, all truth. Not some. Not some. It is not by might anymore. It is not by power. It is by the. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by the Holy Spirit. Your might and your power was in the old dispensation of the law, that which you couldn't. That it was about what you did right, to, you know, to receive the blessing of God, and when you you did wrong, you received a curse. And both blessing and curse could not coexist. In the same in the same body in the same life are you listening and so now the Holy Spirit is with us so allow him to do his work allow the Holy Spirit to do his work beloved he will do it so beautiful he will do it beautiful without your sweat 
the Holy Spirit will do it. Whatever you are into, if you are in business, involve the Holy Spirit. You are in school, involve the Holy Spirit. Involve the Holy Spirit in your marriage. Involve the Holy Spirit in your finances. Involve the Holy Spirit in your ministry, in your, in, in your walk of life, in your friendship. Involve the Holy Spirit. Beloved, involve the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit. You, can, you can't handle the situation. Allow the Holy Spirit to do it. I'm telling you. I mean, I was one of those people. I, I tried to do everything. Oh, some of some people who know me, they will tell you, I try to do everything. But I've come to get some sense in my head. I say, you know what? Now that I understand, oh boy, I was trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit at back up. Trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit. Can you? Beloved, you can't do it. You can't do the work of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? So allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in every area of your life. In every area. I mean, I don't know where you are. You know where you are. But my, my assignment is to, is to remind you that in this dispensation of grace is the Holy Spirit. See, the Bible says, go with me. Let me give you my last scripture for the day. The Holy Spirit will reveal even the deep things of God concerning your life. This is very powerful. I want you to stay with me where I'm, I'm, what I'm talking to you about. The Holy Spirit, beloved, when you get this understanding, you will stop running, running to people to hear what God is saying. You will hear it yourself. The Holy Spirit will tell you. I'm telling you this. Listen, see, and I'm not trying to talk the, the, the office of, the, this pro, of prophets out. But we are living in a time where some of you are running, looking for prophets everywhere and running after them. Listen, the office of the prophets in, this, in the fivefold ministry as God gave, are you listening? As God gave was for the edification of the church. It wasn't for you to go in and seek them as, as soothsayers, you know, to, to tell you things about yourself. Are you listening? So when you walk with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you and, and lead you and tell you things that, I mean, the Holy Spirit will tell you the mind of God concerning you. I'm, I'm let, go with me, let me show you some. The book of Corinthians. Go, go to Corinthians. I'm going to give you this and we're going to close for the day. Okay? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Go 1 Corinthians. All right? Bishop, Bishop, God bless you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will tell you the mind of God concerning you. So whatever you don't know, Madhu, God bless you. Whatever you don't know, the Holy Spirit will tell you. If you are, if you know that the Holy Spirit is in you and walking with you, and with you, as Jesus says, look at this. You will not be running everywhere. Watch this. Look at chapter two of First uh, Corinthians, verse six. For the sake of time, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages to our glory. Hallelujah. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would not have crucified the king of glory. But as it is written, watch this now, as it is written, I had not seen or ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for those who love him. Do you love God? Do you love God? That's number one. Then I want you to know that you are running, looking for prophets here and there to tell you things about you. But listen to the scripture. The office of the prophets in the fivefold ministry was not for the prophets to become soothsayers. That you go to them to find things about you and, and things that, uh, to, in, in, that may not be working for you now. That the Holy Spirit is, is probably pruning certain things out of your life to bring you to that place. You are running after the and 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 I'm telling you, see, this, they did the same thing to people now did the same thing as those days they did it to Moses. Prophets, if you are not careful, prophets, if you are not careful, you will let the people 
mess your ministry up. Please take this advice. People are running to you and, and very soon they, they make you as God and want to know everything. And you because you are a prophet, you are in this five part of this fivefold ministry for the church, not for people to just come and see you as soothsayers. And then some other spirits take in. Now you've for, forgotten your assignment and picking up things just because people are coming to you. Be very careful. I'm telling you. Look at how they me they, they, they messed up uh, um, uh, Moses for Moses to get angry and instead of touching what God says he should do, he struck. Beloved, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to do his work, this pe same people will mess you up. Watch this now. So uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things which God had prepared for those who love him. Are you listening to me? I didn't, I mean, I didn't, I didn't used to have no sense in my head until the Holy Spirit took over. Now I look back and I say, how foolish was I? And I did some of what I'm telling you too. Are you listening? But God, watch this now, but God has revealed them to us the things that nobody knows. God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Beloved, are you listening? Through his spirit. God has revealed through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man which is, which is except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, watch this now, even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So, beloved, when you walk, when the Holy Spirit is with you, and God is not a respecter of persons, the Holy Spirit is not only with the prophets. The Holy Spirit is not only with the pastors. The Holy Spirit is not only with the teachers or the disciples or the evangelists. The Holy Spirit, God says that in the last days, which you call the last days now, some, you see things and say, oh boy, we're in the last days. Well, if you believe we're in the last days, then believe also the gospel that in the last days, God says through the prophet uh, Joel, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Are you listening to me? I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And so beloved, the spirit of God is not only with a particular people that you have to go and see them. Like the spirit of God is not in you. No. You accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You baptized. The spirit of God is, is come upon you. No one knows the things uh, of God. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. It has been freely given to us by God. Now you are going to pay somebody to tell you what you want to hear about yourself. Now you tell me that is of God. That is not the Holy Spirit. That is some other God that you are going to, some other God that you are going to seek. Like that which Saul did. Going to seek a soothsayer to tell you things. If you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, you must have the Holy Spirit yourself. If you, are, if you say you are a Christian, if you believe you are a Christian, you have given your life to Jesus. You have believed and received his, the finished work that he did for you. Then be baptized. Be baptized to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will teach you. I just read that. You go and read the rest of it for yourself. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth, the Bible said. Jesus said that. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. Jesus didn't say, go and look for, uh, 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 go and seek prophet for prophets to tell you about, about your life or your destiny. No one knows, the Bible says. 
some of this what 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 I, I, we call familiar spirit is being used it's been used familiar spirit one of these days i'll be talking to you about that it's familiar spirit who knows certain things and, and uh, based on your background and you go to them and they tell you all these things and put some fear and some and 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 and, and you know put you in the place of fear beloved scripture your your god says i have not given you the spirit of fear so if god has not given you the spirit of fear why are you entertaining fear yes it's because of your ignorance of the word of god so you are running to to this one listen again let me repeat myself the office of the prophet in the fivefold ministry of the church is not that or is not is not to be used as an office of soothsayers. The Holy Spirit should be in you. Are you listening? A Christian without the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to end here, a Christian without the Holy Spirit is like a Coca-Cola bottle without the actual product in it. The bottle, yes, when you pick up the bottle, you see the writing and inscription of Coca-Cola in it. I'm using Coca-Cola because everybody knows Coca-Cola. All right? You see yourself, you see this is a bottle. So whilst you are going to church, everybody see you as a, a Christian going to church. But there's nothing in it. That which makes the bottle, Coca-Cola, is not in it. It's the same way. That makes that which makes you a Christian is not in you. The Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not in you. So, we, first of all, receive Jesus and it's finished work. Okay? And then be baptized. Be baptized. So if you don't, if you have not been baptized, if you have received Jesus and you've not been baptized, go ask your pastor, whatever if you are in church. If you are not in church right now and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead him to you now. I want to lead you to Jesus. Say this prayer with me. This, listen. Open your faith up. What is faith? Faith is leaving everything and, and taking up Jesus. Faith is trusting and believing in him. That's faith. Okay? So go with me now. Or if you have given your life to Jesus, but you don't have, you are not baptized to have the evidence of this gift of the Holy Spirit, beloved, you have to. You have to, because the Holy Spirit must be on you, in you. Jesus said that. That was a promise he gave. He says, he says, I will pray the Father to send you the Holy Spirit to be with you and in you forever. Forever, he says. Forever. And so, beloved, you need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot. The Holy Spirit will help you in, in, listen, the Holy Spirit will help you in your education. The Holy Spirit will help you in your business. The Holy Spirit will help you in your ministry. The Holy Spirit will help you in your finances. The Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you in every and every and all areas of your life. Why do I say that? Because the things you cannot do is no longer about your effort, about your, your own works. It's about the work of the Holy Spirit. It is not by might. It's not by power or the connections you have. It's by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. Are you listening? It's not say as me. It says the Lord. So allow the Holy Spirit. And please don't try to be anybody's Holy Spirit. Don't, don't do the work of the... Pastors, don't do the work of the Holy Spirit. Hey, son, God bless you. But Prophet Ezekiel... Don't do the work of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, don't do it. You can't. You cannot do it. You can't change nobody. Oh, oh boy, I sounded like a Ghanaian. Nobody. Oh. <laughs> you can't change nobody. No. It's not your job. You can't change yourself. How much try to change somebody? You can't change yourself. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And you want to know what God thinks about you, ask the Holy Spirit. 
Stop running to all these places. Beloved, Christian, if you are a child, I'm talking to the children of God. I'm talking to you who call yourself a Christian. Stop running everywhere because you know what you are doing. You are, you are telling the Holy Spirit, I don't need you. I need to go and hear from, from what somebody have to, from what my ears want to hear. Allow the Holy Spirit, talk to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not, it's not only, it's not upon some particular people alone. No. God says, I pour my spirit upon all flesh. All. Are you a flesh? Are you, no, ask yourself, are you, are you a flesh? Then I want you to know that as you receive, oh boy, the scripture says, as many as receive him, as many as you receive him to them he gave the right to become the sons and daughters of God as many the Bible says that today when you hear this message do not hark in your heart tomorrow is not guaranteed even the next hour you don't even know what's going to happen if you believe that this is the last days then also believe the gospel of Jesus Christ as God will pour his spirit upon all flesh. He'll pour his spirit upon all flesh. Not only a particular people. The pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, those in the fivefold ministry, that's that's they are called to lead the people. Are you listening? They are all called, like I'm called, to bring you this scripture. Break it down for you to understand. So that you don't live in ignorance anymore. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, oh God. The Bible says that the disciples began to, to be so bold, so bold. That, that, that describes, and I mean, in, in Acts chapter 2, you see where Peter and John were so bold, and I mean, they, they, they even healed the sick. The sick was healed. That describes the high priest and all these people who didn't have the Holy Spirit. You see the difference? They did not have the Holy Spirit. Peter and John was full of the Holy Spirit. Now they see, they see what this other pastors saw what these people are doing that they couldn't do. Bible said that they plotted to put fear in them to stop preaching the gospel with the evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit. And they told them, stop. Don't preach in this name of Jesus anymore. Oh boy, the more you say we should stop, the more we will preach. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. Why? Meanwhile, that's the high priest. The scribes. The Sadducees. Have you thought about this? Why did the scribes, the high priest, the, the Pharisees didn't have the Holy Spirit? Why didn't they have the Holy Spirit? But the disciples had the Holy Spirit. And what the disciples now were doing, the scribes, the high priest, the Pharisees were concerned. Uh-huh. That is the difference. Both of them were religious, if you will. But the difference is that the disciples now have received the Holy Spirit. Before the Holy Spirit, they were just like the high priests and all that. That's it. They look at the way they dress. Beloved, don't let appearances fool you. Like I gave you the illustration of a pastor of a church who dressed like uh, homeless people. Or homeless person and the church people dress nicely and all that they pass by him until he walked the same the way he has dressed as a, a homeless person all the way into the pulpit now they saw that they have a homeless looking pastor to preach to them what a shame what a shame with all your suit and all your nice looking self holy your thou self you have a homeless-looking person standing in your pulpit. 
to preach to you. I know that church will never be the same again. May you have this understanding that you need the Holy Spirit. Pray with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for hearing this message. I am a sinner. I see myself with my sinful life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent right now. And I, I receive the Lord Jesus and his finished work. I need the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you right now. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know right now, beloved, listen, it is, it, it is not about, about feeling something. No, it's about believing. It's about believing. So I want you to pray right now with me. I want to pray for you. If you have received the Holy Spirit, go to your, if you have a church, ask the pastor, tell your pastor that, uh, listen, I have, I, have re I have been born again and I will want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? If they don't believe in the Holy Spirit and uh, you are also in a church, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit, please leave. I'm telling you, leave that place. Go to, because you need the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit was not in, in, uh, of importance for us, Jesus wouldn't have asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit to us. Because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot, you cannot live a, a, you know, a life of fulfillment. You cannot. So let me pray for you right now. Lift your, hand, your right hand with me as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people who are everywhere right now under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit wherever they are. They have opened their hearts up to receive you. Holy Spirit, fall afresh now in their lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, as in the days of the Pentecost, do it for them now. Come upon them because you have promised to us that when you have come, you will lead us into all truth. I thank you now. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, if you have received the Holy Spirit by faith, watch your life. In the meantime, don't close your Bible. If you don't have one, get one. Begin to study the Word. Begin to study the Word. Beloved, begin to study the word. What I just shared with you in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you are just joining me, all right, chapter 2, just take your time and read it. And I want you to know that, you know, the Holy Spirit is at work in this dispensation of grace. You cannot even understand what this grace is all about. God's grace, that unmerited favor. That, that which you didn't work for it. God has given it to you. But you must receive it with understanding. Knowing that the Holy Spirit is the one who will lead you and help you to live to its fullness. The fullness of the grace of God. Well, I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. This is what you need. You need the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. And uh, do me a favor. Share this broadcast with everybody in your contact. That they, might, they may also hear the word and receive the Holy Spirit. So that they can also live a fulfilled life. They need the Holy Spirit as well. Share it. Share it to, to everyone. All your friends. Alright. Now, I want you to also help us in this ministry with your financial contribution or support because we want to expand um, the, the, um, uh, our equipment to be able to broadcast to you in, uh, even in the, in the other language, all right? We can translate the English 
into other language whilst I'm even speaking some of the of the of the things I say on the scriptures may come into your screen we want to get this equipment and so we need your contribution all right for us to do that your financial contribution if you want to support us all right I'm not ashamed to ask for support if you if you want to support us go to our website www Patrick Quenu Ministries, you will see um, a notification on the buttons that say donate. Click on it and then you take care of the rest as much as you can. All right, maybe $100, $200, $500, $1,000, 10000 a million. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be able to do more and be a blessing to the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or you may want to say, listen, I can I give it to you right now? Um, I may want to send it, send it to you by a cash app, all right? Take this number, 914, area code 914-572-9816. 914-plus-1, from outside the United States, plus-1, 914-572-9816. You can send an instant um, cash app, and that will be received as well, okay? In the meantime, you realize that today... Um, I'm only using the the, uh, the Facebook. All other um, 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 areas of the social media, which we normally are live instantly, like the the Twitter, the Periscope, the YouTube, we I could we couldn't use that today. Why? Because we this is what I'm talking about. We need to expand this, and so we need your help to do that. Okay, so go to the website Patrickwenu Ministries, www.patrickwenuministries.com and look for the button that says donate all right and give your best donation or go or send an instant um, donation also by um uh, by cash app uh, with a number plus one okay nine one four five seven two nine eight one six it will be a blessing for us to expand and in the meantime please share this broadcast to all and all of your friends and loved ones, let them also receive the word of God to know that they need the Holy Spirit so that they can fulfill a complete and fulfilled life that which God has put in all of us. May God bless you until then. I want you to join me same time tomorrow, same time tomorrow, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, 2 p.m. GMT, Ah, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. God bless you.